Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Every time I'm out and about or in a different area of the country, I love to take a look at panels and the way they were wired. Now, I usually try to find panels that are relatively new, but I think I'm gonna start a series where we look at panels that are from days gone by. In this case, this panel right next to me was wired in approximately 2005. Uh, one easy way to tell when your house was wired was is just to look on the jacket of the Romex. On the jacket of the Romex, you'll find that usually there's a date that is marked for the manufacture date of these wires themselves. So kind of an easy way to tell. It's not obviously going to be exact, uh, but I looked at a few different wires and they all say 2005. So right there in the center is our main power coming into this panel. And right away you'll notice that this panel does not have a main breaker. And that's because this is a sub panel. This is in a condo unit where there's like four or six units in the same building technically. So there is no main breaker. None of these are the main breaker either. So since it's in the same building, it doesn't have to comply with that less than six throw rule. So it is not required to have a main breaker. So it's kind of interesting. So if you want to shut off power to the whole house, you have to switch every single one of these breakers off. You can also see right here that there's a couple of double breakers. So those are going to be interesting to look at. You can see they did a nice job of labeling all of the individual breakers. So it's easy to see exactly what is what. Now the brand of this panel happens to be a Murray, which I don't have very much experience with those. If you guys are a fan of them, let me know in the comments below. All right, so let's go ahead and get this panel opened up. Now we are gonna be looking at this panel while it's live. So we're gonna be really careful while we do so to not uh, put ourselves in any danger. I have taken off my watch, which I sometimes forget to do. All right, I've got all four screws out here. Always make sure that when you take the screws out of the panel cover, that you're holding on to it. It looks like there's a couple of tabs that actually kind of keep it from falling down, but you still wanna be super careful. All right, there it is. It's always fun when you first get the panel cover off and you get to see what's inside. Well, sometimes it might make you a little bit depressed depending on what you actually see. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Right away we can see that this is a pretty neat job that they did inside of this panel. Uh, the wires are pretty tidy and organized as they come down and through the gutters on either side of the breakers. So that looks pretty good to start off with. Uh, you can see that our main service entrance cable right here coming in is an aluminum cable. And right there you can see it says 3CDRS to AWG. It's kind of hard to see for this aluminum cable. So it's two gauge aluminum that's feeding this panel. So if we scroll down to two gauge aluminum, so assuming they're using the 75 degree column, we would be looking at an ampacity of 90 amps. So in all likelihood, this panel has a 90 amp breaker that is feeding these main wires coming into the panel. And then you can see that we do have a total of four wires in that cable, which is proper for a sub panel. So there are two hot legs of 120 volts each, and then our neutral wire, which runs over to this neutral bar on the right hand side. And then we have a bare ground wire, which runs over to that ground bar. And you can see that they use the proper non-corrode paste for those connections where the aluminum is cinched up. Now kind of interesting the way they brought their cables into the panel. They just stubbed them in a little bit further with the sheathing on them and just wrote where each circuit was for right there on that sheathing. Instead of cutting a separate loose piece of sheathing like you often see, they just let the cables extend into the panel a little bit. So it actually doesn't look too bad and I can see where that that method would work pretty well. And here you can see that the neutral bar on the right hand side is isolated from the panel itself. So it is not bonded to the panel. So the bonding screw or bonding strap would have been removed in that instance, assuming they added these bars separately. So all the neutrals are tied in here on the right and then all the grounds are tied in on the left. The grounding bar is connected to the case of the panel and then that ground wire coming from our our uh, main feed wherever that is that bare ground wire connects to that ground bar so all that looks really really good now one of the bigger things that is different from then till now is that you see that there are no specialty breakers in here whatsoever these are all just standard good old classic breakers now I know that in the bathrooms there is ground fault protection as well as in the kitchen 
as well as in unfinished spaces. So a lot of the ground fault requirements are still the same. You can see right here, this is a ground fault outlet for the basement. But arc fault breakers had not yet been implemented into the code. Now as far as our individual circuits go, we have our dryer circuit right here, which is a 10 gauge wire on a 30 amp double pole breaker. And that ultimately goes to this 10-3 cable. So it has a black, a red, and a white because the dryer also requires a neutral. And then right below that we have our air conditioner, which is actually just a 20 amp breaker and 12 gauge cable. You can see that they made a, an attempt at using some Sharpie on that second wire, but it's either faded significantly or they just didn't get very much Sharpie on there in the first place. So that's a reason why black tape might be a better option when you're redesignating a white wire as a hot wire, as is in the case that they were using for this air conditioner. And then right underneath that is our circuit for our bathroom outlets. So this would be feeding the outlets in the bathrooms, which then have ground fault uh, receptacles for the first one and then any, every one after that. Underneath that, we have uh, kitchen outlets um, and then bedroom number two, it looks like, for this double breaker. Interesting that it's a 20 and a 15 together instead of like 220s or 215s. Not exactly sure why that is. I honestly haven't worked with double breakers very much in the past. And then underneath that we have a breaker dedicated for the hood, which would also be for the microwave, I believe, right above the range. And then the 15 amp breaker there is for the living room outlets. Right underneath that is another 15 amp breaker, which is going to be for the kitchen lights. This 15 amp breaker is for a bedroom. And then this 15 amp breaker here on the bottom is for the garage. Coming to the left hand side, we have our basement lights and outlets. Now this one's sort of interesting. We can see this wire here comes out of there, this little bundle there. So it feeds out and into this wire nut and then it goes up on that black cable right there which ultimately leads out of the panel. You can see it says basement right there. That is where that wire is feeding. So all the basement lights are fed from that wire. And then the second wire in this splice feeds down out of the panel into this ground fault outlet which is the only receptacle in the entire basement. So they have both their lights and their one circuit for the basement on that same breaker there at the bottom. Dedicated 15 amp breaker for the furnace. Dedicated 15 amp breaker for the garbage disposal. Dedicated 15 amp breaker for the dishwasher. Another dedicated circuit for our kitchen receptacles. 20 amp breaker dedicated for the washing machine. So this breaker right here is for the water heater and I'm not really sure why, but this one has a little locking device on it. I believe that's what this is. If you guys think you know why they would have put this on here, let me know in the comments below. And that is actually on a 25 amp breaker. And obviously then they'd be using 10 gauge wire and you can see they redesignated that white wire using a little bit of Sharpie, just like they did for the air conditioner. The top one here is a 40 amp breaker, double pull, which is for our electric range. And that is going to be feeding, I believe an eight gauge wire coming up and out of the panel. Now down here, this is the breaker for the garage we already talked about and it feeds into this little wire nut bundle here as well. And what they did there, they just cut it and are pulling the power for this transformer, which I'm guessing is for the doorbells, uh, off of that circuit right there. So it's an example of how you can add a transformer for your doorbell wiring and basically tap off of a general purpose uh, circuit. And then you can just mount that transformer on the outside of the panel like you see there. And then you can see how they anchored their wires within 12 inches of the top of the panel. And they used uh, metal staples as well as a couple of plastic ones there for their larger size wires to do so. And I'm curious to know uh, how many of you can use metal staples or how many of you use plastic staples? So I'm gonna put a pole right up there, hit that pole. I'd love to know uh, if you use metal staples or if you use plastic ones. So our cables then come up and into the joist cavity and they're kind of tied together in a bundle up there using a little piece of wire it looks like at first. And then coming across over here, they have them zip tied again. And then ultimately down here, they start to kind of break apart and head their individual directions. And then you can see the wires are just pulled through holes, drilled in the joists. Now they have quite a few cables going through the same hole and depending on who you ask, uh, that may or may not be a good thing or be allowed. So let me know what you think about that. 
One other observation I guess would be that this panel is all the way stuffed full at the moment. If that panel had just been a little bit bigger and had another 10 spaces in it, or maybe not even that many, that would have made it a lot better for future usability for finishing off this basement instead of having to add a second sub panel. So that would be one major critique I would have of it. So overall I think it's a pretty clean looking panel. Let me know anything that you noticed in the comments below. Kind of fun to see back 15 years ago uh, what things looked like. Let me know if you like this type of video and if you want me to continue to do these panel tours even on older style panels. If you want to keep learning about electrical panels, click on this short playlist right here that I've put together of the different panel videos that I've done that are just more the style of going through and touring some different work that people have done. If you haven't already, please take a second, hit that subscribe button and click on the bell to turn on notifications. All right, we'll see you over there in the playlist in just a few seconds.